This tutorial is going to start to talk about workflow in our studio. Now, there are many things about working in our, in our studio that people find confusing. And there are ways that you can minimize the confusion by getting into a good workflow practice right from the beginning. So that's what this tutorial is all about. So by the end of it, hopefully, everyone will have good workflow practices. Now, one of the, I think, common things that people struggle with who uh, are used to using kind of standard software with uh, point and click interfaces is that when you're using something like R and R Studio, you have to access files and save files using file path, so typing in a big long path uh, to the file that you want. Now, the simplest way to minimize the pain of dealing with file paths is to work with something called an RStudio project file. So that's the first tip that I have is use RStudio project files. It will save you an enormous amount of pain. I mean, it won't save you all the pain, but some of the pain will go away. Um, what is an RStudio project file? It is a file created by RStudio. It has an extension of .rproj. Um, and essentially what it does is it stores information about the containing folder. So if you save this project file within a particular folder, it saves information about that folder, where it is on, in your file system, and also uh, it will save information about the previous state of the project. So when you open an RStudio project file, it will open up in RStudio and it essentially um, accesses the information about the folder in which the project stored, which means that you can access files relative to the folder that you're project is stored in rather than trying to access files relative to your entire hard drive. Now this might not make much sense and it kind of doesn't matter whether it makes sense. It's one of those things you can just sort of follow a procedure and uh, even if you don't understand why that procedure helps, it will still help. So one of the key things is if you're working with project files is you also need to get uh, organized. So, I, so um, the way I work with RStudio, and I think uh, this is a good way of working, although feel free to disagree, is I have a kind of a, a set process that I go through whenever I start a new project in RStudio. So if I've got some data to analyze and um, I want to kind of start a new project, then I will create a new RStudio project and that creates a folder for me. And then within that folder, I will always create a, a sort of a subfolder called data. That's where I will store all of the data files related to the project. I will always create a folder called R underscore docs, which is where I store all my R documents and R studio documents. And if I have, you know, any other things like images, for example, is a common one. I might have images or media associated with the project. I'll have a folder called images. So what you can see on the screen is uh, a kind of a, a minimal setup of an RStudio project as, as I would do it. So I've got a directory where all the project information is stored or a folder where all the information is stored. Within that, a folder where I store my data files, another folder where I store all my R and RStudio documents and another folder where I might store images and you know you can add to that folder list but as a bare minimum I'll have data and R docs. And you can also see that within that project folder there will be a file um, which is my RStudio project and that's the file that I double click on when I want to open the project. So why does this help? Well you can also see on the screen there's um, a very, very long and cumbersome piece of text that says C colon slash users slash Andyfield slash documents, blah, 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 blah. 
that would be that that's a file path to a data file called myfunkydata.csv and that data file is stored on my hard drive my c drive and that's basically the the the, the structure of folders so it's within a folder called users within that a folder called andy field within that a folder called documents within that a folder called my new project within that a folder called data so if every time I want to access that data file or, or load it or save it or something like that, I have to use that big long string of text, which is really tedious, unbelievably tedious. The other thing that's bad about it is it means if I move machines, if I go to another computer that doesn't have that exact file system in place, then I have to rewrite all my R code to access that file because it might be saved in a different location. That is tedious. By using an RStudio project, I can use what are known as relative paths. So you can also see on this slide, there's a much shorter path that starts with a dot. The dot is the project folder. So that single dot is representative of the project folder. So wherever that folder is stored, it doesn't matter. And we don't need to know it because our RStudio project will automatically get us there with that dot. So then all we have to do is after the dot put slash data to get into the data folder and then slash the name of the file that we're trying to access, which in this case is my funky data. Underneath, you'll also see a very similar string of text, which has two dots. Now, two dots, uh, we would need two dots because if we're storing our R Studio documents within a folder called R Docs. We need to get out of that folder into the main project folder and then go back into data. And that's what the double dots does. It takes us up a level. So it takes us out of R Docs and it takes us into our data folder. So we could only use the single dot if we stored our R documents in the main project folder, which you can do, but. Um, I prefer, what you know, when you have lots and lots of files that can get a bit cumbersome, it's quite nice to have a folder that has all your R docs in. So then you'd use the double dot. Now, again, this is a lot more straightforward than using long path names, but people do still get very confused about the dots and the double dots. It's not that intuitive. Now, if that was all too confusing for you, don't worry. You can always look at the cute spaniel. Hello. He's the spaniel of statistics. And whenever you're feeling stressed about R or R Studio, you can just imagine the spaniel and you'll feel better. Now, that's R Studio project files. Let's have a look at how you would create one. For those of you studying at Sussex, we are going to be saving everything onto uh, the Sussex Cloud or the OneDrive account, but anyone not at Sussex, just you know, put it wherever you want. So once you've opened RStudio, you would go to the File menu, click on New Project, and you'll get a dialog box like this, and you can either um, create a new directory with your project on, so create a new project directory, or if you already have a directory that you want to kind of convert into an RStudio project, you can select an existing directory. We're going to do a new one. And there's lots of, um, lots of options here. You don't need to worry about any of them. Just select the top one, which is for a new project. Then it says create project as a subdirectory of blah, de, blah, de, blah. What you want to do here is browse to wherever it is that you want to save your project. So like I said, if we're gonna to go to the Sussex OneDrive, we'd go there and let's say, for example, we wanna keep all our projects together. I'm gonna to create a folder called R Projects. And that is where I'm gonna put all of my R Projects. Now the directory name that it's asking for, that is the name that you want to give your RStudio project file. 
So um, you'd give it a name that helps you to identify what the project's all about. <laughs> so for example, uh, let's just go, my first project. And that can be the name of your first project. There's some other options on here, don't worry about them, they're quite advanced things. So for now, we'll just create that project. Now nothing amazing happens, in fact, nothing seems to happen at all, apart from in the files tab down here, you'll notice that we are now in our OneDrive account, we're now in the folder called R project that we created, and within that we're in a folder called My First Project, which is uh, what we named our project. So you can, uh, you know, navigate around here. So there's our Sussex Drive, there's our projects, there's my first project. And within that, we've got our old project file. And we've got nothing else in there at the moment. Now, I said earlier on, I think it's a good idea to create a data folder. So we can do that by clicking on new folder and then calling it data. R is case sensitive, so I always leave everything as lower case it makes life easier. So we create a folder called data. I also suggested creating a folder called rdocs. So again, we click on new folder, type in r underscore docs. Again, I'm going to do it all lowercase. And there we have it. We have two folders within our main project folder. First thing I'm going to do is put some data in the data folder. And I'm going to do that just by using the, the normal dialog boxes for navigating around my file system. So over here, I've uh, basically got my project folder that I just created and you can see the data folder there. And over here, I've just got a different location on my hard drive where I happen to have some data files. And I'm just going to copy one of these across, which is um, a data file that's got some uh, data about the band Metallica. So now in our studio, if we look in our data folder, we now have that data file there. Next thing we would do is to create uh, a document that we want to work on. Now, um, I recommend using R Markdown files. There are there are other ways that you can interact with R using R Studio, but I think R Markdown is the best for a number of reasons. So we go File, New File, R Markdown. You'll get a window like this. I ask for a title of the document. I'm just going to call it my first document. Uh, it'll ask you for an author name, you don't have to put an author in, you can leave that blank if you want to. And then uh, output formats, just leave it as uh, selected as HTML for the time being. Now what this does is it creates what's known as a markdown file. And um, you can see there's already text and stuff in there and that's because it, it basically loads a template for you to use. I'm going to get rid of all this. So in a markdown document, the gray areas are what is known as code chunks. And this is where you write instructions to R and whatever you write in there gets sent off to R to do something, whatever it is that you want to do. Outside in the white area, you can write text. So I'm just going to give you a, a simple illustration here. Um, this is a plot of some built in data and then we can insert a code chunk and you can do that in a number of ways through the menus you can go code insert chunk and that inserts a code chunk for you there's also keyboard shortcuts you can use as well and then in here I'm just going to use some things that are built in so we're going to do a, a plot of a built-in data set called pressure so if we want to see what that code chunk does, we can click on the green arrow here. And there you go, creates a plot. And if we don't want to see that anymore, we can click on that to clear the output. Now, when we hit this knit button, what will happen is this markdown document will get transformed into an HTML document. 
like this. It has a title, name, and the, the text that we wrote. This is the plot of some built-in data, the code that we wrote, and the output of that code. So Markdown is a, a great way to kind of integrate documents. You can put text and explanations. You can include the code that you've used and you also get the output of the code that you've used. So that's one of the reasons for using Markdown is it's you get these really uh, nice documents. Now, just briefly going back to the uh, issue of using project files and how that helps with accessing uh, files. I just want to briefly illustrate this. Now, if we hadn't used a project file and we wanted to open our Metallica data that we uh, uh, copied across to our data folder, we'd have to use a command something like this. Now, don't worry too much. You'll we'll be learning in due course what these commands do. But essentially, what I'm doing here is creating an object in R called my data, and I'm using a function called read CSV that just reads in a um, a particular type of data file known as a CSV file. Now, if we hadn't used a project file, this is what the command would look like. So we'd create my data from this function, and inside the function, we'd have to put the full file path for our Metallica data, which is my C drive, users, Andy Field, the OneDrive at Sussex, our projects. And then within that, we create our project folder, my first project, and then within that, there's a data folder. So it's a big, 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 big long string. And um also potentially this wouldn't this uh string of text wouldn't necessarily work on another machine now by using a project file the command we'd actually use is this so it's, it's the same we're creating an object my data we're creating it using this read csv function in R, but notice the text in that function, so the stuff in quotes, rather than this big long string of uh, text that tells us exactly where our file is, we just have the double dot. Now the double dot takes us out of the R docs folder, and then once we're out of that, we can, we've got slash data, which takes us into the data folder, and then to the file we want, which is Metallica CSV. So even without understanding exactly what these commands are doing, hopefully it should be clear to you that uh, using the relative path is a lot simpler than using a, a big long string of text. The other thing is this double dot will be portable. So we can copy this uh, entire project folder across to any other machine or we can send it to a supervisor or someone we're collaborating with and it will work for them as well. They won't need to have the same file structure as us. So that is the benefit of using project files. Now in due course, we will look at another way to um, access file paths using um, something called here. But for now, I just want to illustrate that using project files makes it easier to access data. So having created this object, we could have a look at it. Let's execute this code chunk and it will read our data in and it shows us it. And as I said, it's some data about Metallica. It's just got names of band members, birth dates and things like that. So to summarize, create yourself, uh, when you have a new project that you're working on, create a new project file in our studio. Within that folder, create a data folder where you store your data and use our markdown documents uh, which you should, or I, I think you should store in a separate folder as well, which I would typically call rdocs. And to find out more about Markdown, look at the other video uh, that I have done explaining a bit more about Markdown. Bye for now.